All right, good morning, folks. It is now 10 o'clock, which means we will begin this very special session of Gutenberg for Site Administrators. Um, thank you all for coming. Hopefully you all are in the right place for this class and you're excited to learn. Uh, my name is Miles Elliott. Um, I'm on the OIT Design and Web Services team, and we do WordPress support for campus as well as doing classes like these and doing custom development uh, for various clients around campus. Um, so this is actually a very, very special session of Gutenberg for site administrators. Um, we've been doing this class now for about 10 months or so, um, and I will tell you why with a very special announcement uh, later on in the class. Um, but first, a little housekeeping stuff. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube Live, you should see a link in the description to a Q&A document. Um, if you want to ask any questions, we'll be monitoring that document. Um, and so if you ask anything, you type it in there and um, either someone from my team will jump in the document and answer it or um, I'll um, bring it up through the audio and talk to you about the um, whatever's going on with that question. Um, now the stream does run on a little bit of a delay, so by the time um, I, uh, you hear what I'm saying, it's a couple, a couple 30 seconds or so after I've said it. So if you feel like I'm ignoring you, um, it may just be that delay. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, all righty here. Um, so today's agenda, uh, first the what, why, and when of Gutenberg. Um, we're going to meet the new editor, look at the interface. Um, we're going to talk about some sort of common barriers or, or things that we've seen people do the first time they see Gutenberg and how they react to it. Um, we're going to look at what's going to happen <coughs> Sorry, to your site once you upgrade. We're going to look at some dip different options for upgrading. And then we're also going to look at some different ways to extend Gutenberg. So first, let's jump right into the what, why, and when of Gutenberg. So. This is the classic visual editor, which is the editor that you've used for years when you're using WordPress. Um, it's now called classic, but you probably just used it as the visual editor. And um, it's good. It's good. It does the things we need to do. It's straightforward. Um, and it, it, it's handy. It's mostly what you see is what you get. It's dependable and it's reliable. Um, but it is harder to build complex pages. It's outdated and clunky compared to, to other things on the web. Um, and here's a acronym coined by my colleague, which I will not try and say, but um, it's sort of what you see is not necessarily what you get depending on several different factors. Um, there can be things that we've done to sort of make WordPress better um, that don't always translate to that WYSIWYG way that you would like. Um, so here's an example of a page that translates pretty well. You look at what's in the visual editor there, and it pretty much matches very similarly to what you end up seeing on the final version of the um, of the post. You know, you've got the extra title and stuff, but the content of the page looks pretty familiar. Um, however, uh, when you talk about a layout like you see on the right, that doesn't necessarily translate so well. Like, how do you do those columns? You know, there's multiple um, images. There's that icon. Um, you know, how do you do that with just text and images? Um, and the answer is that we've used all these different ways, um, sort of tricks to get it to work, whether that's short codes or advanced custom fields or um, you know page builders. And they all can sort of do it, but they tend to be a little more hacky and unintuitive. Um, it's not clear how those things you know, transform to what you see on the end page. You have to really know what you're doing to get that final page layout. Meanwhile, the rest of the web has been moving on. Um, if you ever used Wix or Squarespace or Medium, you'll notice that they're much more clean and they have these options for different blocks to be able to pull in these elements instead of solely really relying on um, text and image. Um, so compared to these other competitors, WordPress is more flexible and enterprise ready, but the newcomers give content creators control in a modern and clean interface um, so people, you know, they, they use these other things, and then they come to WordPress, and it feels like it's older and more clunky. Um, so it's time for WordPress to move on, too. And so here's a quote from Matt Mullenweg, who co-founded WordPress um, at the State of the Word event um, in January 4th, 2017. And what he said was that, oops, um, uh, WordPress will create a new page and post-building experience that makes writing rich 
hosts effortless and has blocks to make it easy to what today might take short codes, custom HTML, or mystery meat embed discovery. And so the key here is that we're looking at a, um, a post building experience with these blocks. And that's, that's really the focus of Gutenberg. Um, and we'll get into that uh, a little bit more in the future. So here we are today. The new editor is called Gutenberg. And um, it will be the new default editor in WordPress version 5.0. And so now here it gets into the very special announcement I have for y'all. Um, and that why this class is special is that we now have a date from Matt Mullenweg himself um, on when Gutenberg will be launched. Um, he wrote a blog post last night, and Gutenberg has been delayed in the past, but never before has, has he come out and said that this is the day it's going to launch. And so that day is, drum roll please, Thursday, December 6th, two days from now, um, WordPress 5.0 is going to launch. Um, and so that is exciting and also scary news because it means that a lot of this stuff um, is happening uh, sooner than we thought it would. We, we were really thinking it would be delayed a little more. Um, there's still some quirks with Gutenberg. There's still some things to work be worked out. And so definitely I'm going to talk about that stuff later on, stuff that y'all should be doing um, in the short term to prepare for that launch. Um, but that being said, you do not have to upgrade immediately to WordPress 5.0. Um, if you are not ready to do so, but again, I'll get that um, get to that a little bit in the future um, But yeah, I've been doing this class for about 10 months now and every time it's been up in the air But now the first time we finally have a date um, And so that's December 6th, um, which is also known as this Thursday um, So that's kind of exciting for us um, But let's meet the editor um, so disclaimer, uh, uh, Gutenberg is an evolving tool. A lot of the screenshots you'll see in this presentation were taken a while ago. And so some things have moved around um, and some things have changed a little bit. Um, so the stuff, what it looks like when Gutenberg's actually launched may not be the same um, as, as what you're gonna see today. And even if we will have a little demo in the future, but even that may change a little bit from when it launches, although probably not very much given that we're so close to launch. So uh, this is the basic Gutenberg interface. Um, you'll notice that it is a lot more clean than um, what you're used to um, with the uh, visual editor. It's more icons, there's less outlines and stuff. Um, so that's a thing to, to keep in mind is that there, there's fewer visual landmarks. Um, but you've got a title up there and um, you've got the block and some buttons up top and you can add more blocks. Um, so um, it's much more clean. You know, if you remember back to those screenshots we had of Wix and WordPress, it's a lot more similar to that. Um, so Gutenberg interacts with uh, Word, uh, with the WP Posts table through the REST API. Um, so if you're using a, a, a different hosting package, OIT hosting has already done this, but if you're hosting off, off campus, you need to make sure that you adjust your mod security rules to allow put requests because um, that's how Gutenberg interacts with everything is over these, these different HTTP requests. So you need to make sure that the things that Gutenberg will require and will work. But again, if you're on Canvas with OIT hosting, uh, that's all taken care of for you. Um, so if it's your first time using Gutenberg, you should see a little tips um, that help you onboard and, and all users will see this. Um, and so these are helpful. They'll give you a little, little show you a little blue dot next to a, you know, a thing you might need to pay attention to, whether that's a button or, or some information, and it'll tell you exactly what that does. It'll explain sort of what's going on behind the scenes with that. Um, and so and that's the thing we also can extend. So we may um, look at extending that via a plugin that's going to add some more context specifically for um, NC State's campus. Um, um, so definitely look at those the first time you launch Gutenberg or any user recommend that you step through those. Um, you know, I'm definitely a person that likes to skip those things, but it's, it's very helpful to, to step through that and see what they have to say. Um, so in Gutenberg, everything is a block. A uh, paragraph is a block, a list is a block, an image is a block. They're all separate blocks. There's no just sort of one big chunk or, or one big blob. It's all separate block. So, um, you know, you might have a, um, you know, columns that are a block. You might have um, a heading that's a block. They're all separate things. And so um, they can be moved around independently. And there's a huge variety of blocks. So um, you can see here a bunch of the default blocks. Um, some examples are images, um, you know, videos, dynamic content, audio, custom HTML, 
um, pull quotes, um, so all sorts of things. Um, and so what, what your content ends up looking like really depends on what the block it is. You know, if you put text inside a heading block, that's gonna be a lot different than text inside, um, say, a pull quote block. Um, so you'll notice that there is that little plus button on the main screen, um, and that is what you use to add a new block to your poster page. Um, this little icon will appear in many different places in the editor. Um, there's one on the top left-hand side of the screen that's always there. Um, but depending on where you're hovering or where what you're doing, where your cursor is, you may see them uh, in different places between blocks. Um, but the, the, they all do the same thing. They're always going to pop up this um, little menu that lets you, um, just the block insert, it lets, lets you pick a block that you want to insert into your content. Um, so anytime you see that icon, that's how you go to add new stuff. Um, blocks can also be nested inside of other blocks that support nesting. Uh, and this is one of the features that's still kind of wonky because it's hard to sometimes make sure they're in the right place. But they do have column blocks. And so you, you make a block that's a column block. And then inside that block is another little add block thing. And so you can put you know, a, a block in each column and then, and then have content side by side. Um, and so that's definitely a feature that's it's really helpful for building those more complex pages. And each block can be customized individually. Um, and your custom op uh, customization options depend on what type of block it is. Um, so you know, a paragraph block is going to have certain things like alignment and stuff, or may have text color. Um, you know, an image is not going to have text color. So the options you see will really depend on what that particular block is. And you'll notice that there's some options for formatting up above the block. When you have a block selected, you'll see that toolbar that has options for that block. But also next to every block, there is a, um, a little three dot menu, um, sometimes called a kebab menu, but there are little three dots is the menu. Um, and now here's one way that these screenshots differ from where it actually is. Um, you'll see that this little three dot menu uh, on the right hand side is to the right of that block. Now it's actually up in that um, toolbar right to the right of where that link um, icon button is. Um, and so in any block, whatever that last um, formatting thing is, you'll see that three dot little button. Um, you can click that to get that drop down menu. And um, this menu is going to let you do a couple of things. But the thing I want to highlight right now is that show block setting, um, which is going to open up a sidebar to the right hand of your editing screen that's going to have much more options for um, controlling the look of that block. So for example, the paragraph block, if I click that, um, you'll notice that that block setting pops up. And you get that sidebar, and there's options for the text size, a custom size. You can turn on a drop cap. Um, you can also adjust the background color and text color of the paragraph. Um, so that's handy for really you know, customizing your page and making sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Um, so pretty much every block has a setting in the block sidebar. Um, and so definitely keep in mind that if you're, you're working with a block and you want to know how to, how to do something, um, take a look at that block setting sidebar. Um, and you can also hide that if you don't want to see it. But I usually leave it open while I'm editing just because there's a lot of handy settings in there. So uh, how will your users react? Um, that's definitely a big question, especially if you are supporting a larger unit. Um, that's really going to determine what your uh, next uh, couple of weeks of support is going to look like if or after you decide to roll out Gutenberg, um, because it's definitely a big change. Um, so blocks, they make it a lot of easier a lot easier to do complex page layouts and dynamic content, um, which is great. Um, but it is very different from what you, most users are used to. Um, so uh, in that, with that in mind, we did some user testing in late January 2018, um, which is a while ago now, but it still holds true for most of the interface. A lot of it was still pretty similar. Um, and so we tested power users who already knew how to use WordPress for the most part. And we had them do a 30-minute exercise to learn the new editor and create content. Uh, if you'd like to read more about it, um, we um, post a, had a blog post about it. Um, you can get at that link. Um, but I'll go through some of the highlights here now. Um, so the first thing was that nobody really knows what to call anything or where anything is. Um, before, the visual editor had a lot of buttons that were titled and had words on them, um, whereas now you have a lot more um, icons or things in areas that it's not quite clear what to call it. And so a lot of people were trying to describe what they're doing. And so here's an actual quote. So I clicked on the little mini hamburger options looking thing over there. 
And so it, it's, it, that's definitely a challenge. And when people are trying to describe the issue they're having, um, it's harder to say, oh, well, it's, this is the, you know, the template settings block. It's going to be, well, it's this little block on the sidebar. So um, it's not quite as um, straightforward to know what you're looking at. And they, they've improved it. They've added more labels. But it's still a thing where um, you might not know what the little eye icon means or, or where to, what, what's going to happen to open up a menu. Um, so that can be a little more confusing. And it's not also clear um, when to choose which block. Um, so like which block would you want to do to recreate the gray box and text to the right? Is it a quote? Is it a paragraph? Is it a pull quote? Is it a verse? I'll let you decide in your mind before I reveal the answer. It's a paragraph block. Uh, you might think it's a quote, but no, that's just a paragraph block with some different settings on it. It's got a background color. It's got a drop cap. Um, but that's still just a paragraph block. So if you're looking, if you want to create something um, and you specifically have in your mind what you're thinking of, um, it's not always clear like which block you need to do that. And there's some blocks that are confusing, like the difference between a quote and a pull quote. Um, that's a little bit confusing. And yeah, so like when do you need each type of block? When can you just customize the block? Um, it's not always clear. So yeah, there's another two paragraph blocks, obviously very different from each other in the way they look. Um, but just still customize with those block settings. Um, so one thing you'll definitely want to tell your users is to try a different block. Um, so you know, one thing in in WordPress in the past, there's been like sort of this add media button um, that people are used to, um, and that was your go-to for any media, and that looks similar to the add image button or the image block now. Um, but you know, if you want to add a video, you'd think maybe go to the video block or um, but even if that that may not be the right one if you want to add a YouTube video um, But a lot of people will just scroll down. They're like, oh, I have a YouTube video I see a video block. I'll plug that in um, when actually the YouTube embed is a separate block um, So it's, it's, it's kind of confusing and you'll get tripped up um, because the video block is really only for Videos where you upload the whole video flyer file to your site Which is a thing we don't recommend in general because they take up a lot of space and the um, servers are not really set up for that. But um, so it's confusing if, if you go in and you have your YouTube link and you plug it in for the file in the video. It might not work. You might not know why. Um, so definitely, when you run into issues, definitely think um, if it's perhaps that there's a different block that's going to be more appropriate for the situation you're in at that point. Um, yeah, and also um, I mentioned that sidebar settings for the blocks. Um, it's hard to notice if you're not expecting that sidebar to be there. Um, you might not think about it. So you might want to change the text color you're used to maybe that being in the toolbar above the paragraph. Um, but it's not going to be there. Um, and it's not immediately clear just from that little three dot thing that that hides you know, a bunch of um, settings behind there. So don't forget and make sure to remind your users that there is that sidebar there to pay attention to um, when um, they go and um, our editing blocks because that's that's pretty important to keep in mind because a lot of important settings are going to be are going to be in there. And then there's also a question: um, Do sidebar block settings change the whole block or selected text um, in the classic editor or in Word? You know, if you select some text and then change the font size, it's just going to affect the text you have selected. Um, but with the paragraph block, if you change the font size. Um, or the font color or the background color, that's going to affect the whole block. You can't just highlight something. Um, and so, but there are those bold and italic options in the toolbar as well as the link, and that does apply just to the highlighted effects. And so that's definitely, um, that can be kind of confusing. Um, you know, when you're, if you just want to make some text bigger, and there's not an easy way to do that right now. Um, so that's the thing to keep in mind is that you can't just, you know, make some text bigger. Um, than other text. Um, but we'll say that users we tested got the hang of the new editor after about 20 minutes in some trial and error. So um, basically, you know, the time it might take you to support a unit or to deal with the tickets that come in is basically how many users are you supporting um, times 20 minutes of trial and error, um, which may be a lot of tickets depending on how many users you support. Um, so some strategies. Um, Tell your users it's coming before it happens, and also to give them a 30-minute guided tour, which will help them sort of avoid those, uh, avoid those common pitfalls. Um, and we also uh, host a Gutenberg for content creators workshop, uh, which is similar to this one, but more focused on the actual content creators than the site administrators. And so that's another workshop 
um, they can sign sign up for. Um, and we also have a um, multi-site we've set up where you can get in there and practice using Gutenberg to publish um, before perhaps it's rolled out on your sites um, at that link there. Um, so that, that's a good way just to sort of play around with the site that's not really going to affect anything. Um, now, as I mentioned before, it is coming out on Thursday, um, but you do not have to upgrade to WordPress 5.0 on the day it launches. You can wait till you're ready. There's also a classic editor plugin you can install that will let you upgrade to WordPress 5.0 but it will um, keep Gutenberg from showing up. You'll only have the um, classic editor, and then you can turn Gutenberg on um, for specific posts or for specific users. Um, so um, keep that in mind. I'll talk a little bit about that in the, um, further on in the presentation. So some helpful hints to tell people. Don't forget about the advanced settings on the right and try a different block. Um, those are two just good pointers um, that everyone's going to want to hear um, and make sure to think about when you're editing because it's easy to forget um, can trip you up if you're trying to to make one block do a thing it's not meant to do or you're missing some settings that would help you make the block do what you want to do. Um, so uh, let's all go in if we want to take a moment. Um, I'm going to go through here and just give it a quick demo. You don't have to follow along, but if you'd like to, um, you can do that. And I'm going to show you a couple things um, with Gutenberg. So I will click on this link, which is going to pop up with this already populated Gutenberg demo page. Um, and so normally when you open Gutenberg, it's not going to have this stuff here. But um, this is just a demo page. I won't be able to save anything, but I can demonstrate some of the um, some of the ways you can use Gutenberg. Uh, I mean, first thing you'll notice is that um, this pop tip has popped up. These are the dot tips. Um, so it's going to tell you, you know, some of the things I've already covered, that you can click the plus button to add a new block, um, and it will tell you um, some other things that will point out these different icons, which is pretty handy. Um, so it's good to sort of go here um, and get just a quick little view of the blocks. Um, so um, here are the blocks. You'll notice this thing at the top it looks like a block. Um, it smells like a block. It's not a block. This is actually the title. It's in there with the blocks, um, but you can't delete it. It doesn't have block settings. Um, this is just the title of the page. But this first thing down here is a block. Um, here is, you know, that icon moved, um, like I said it would, and you can show block settings. That's how you get that sidebar open. Um, but it's pretty easy to, you know, select some text, make it bold. Uh, I can open up that block settings again. Um, change the background to orange and the text to black, um, give it a drop cap. Um, and so it's easy to, to have these settings. Oops, that was kind of weird. Well, I guess it takes away the drop cap when I'm editing it. Um, but yeah, you can write a line, center line, what have you. Um, you can also move these blocks up or down um, with the arrows. You can also drag and drop, although this will get kind of finicky sometimes. It's not too happy with me right now. Um, so there's definitely still some weird stuff, um, but here's an image block. You'll see that it has um, some more options on the right-hand side, different from what the paragraph has. Instead of you know the text color, now you've got the um, image size. Um, you can adjust the way that that appears, um, and I can resize that. Um, there was just some updates to Gutenberg um, related to the fact that it's about to launch, and so I think that's why some things are being weird here because it's a page coming from the older version. Um, so yeah, that's sort of Gutenberg looks like this. You'll see that uh, I can add these blocks. The little plus button button pops up in between these little blocks if I want to add something between there. Um, I can also go in the um, that little menu and insert before or after. Um, so there's different places you can go to add blocks. If I scroll to the bottom, you'll notice that it's got a little empty paragraph here. And um, it's going to have my most commonly used um, blocks on the right-hand side or it's going to give me that little um, plus icon to do there. Now, by default, you're in a paragraph block, so you can just start typing, um, and it will turn it into a paragraph block. I can spell. Um, and then, so that's now a paragraph block. So if all you're doing is writing, you don't have to necessarily do a thing. You can just go, you hit enter, it's going to make you a new block. And you can type again. Um, so that's pretty handy. Again, you always have this add block up here. And you can also undo and redo, which is handy if, if you mess up things. Um, another feature is that all of these, um, 
all of the block inserters have this search for block um, bar at the top. So you don't have to scroll through and find, you know, through these different menus what you're looking for. If you know what you're looking for, you can type in um, an image and it will pop up. Um, the other thing is that some of them, you know, the image has a specific image name, um, but other blocks will have keywords. Um, so the blocks will um, come up if you type in one of their keywords as well. So like gallery doesn't have image in the name, but it relates to images. So if you're not sure what you which block you want to use, it might be a good idea just to type that keyword in you're thinking of, and it'll give you blocks that that use that. Um, and so I can't upload images here, but you know this would be image and text. And so that's a thing that you know you may not have found if you're just looking for image, but if you type an image, it's going to let that pop up. Also, um, you can skip over the block inserter entirely by just typing a slash, and then that will bring up a um, the list of blocks, and then you can start typing um, the name of your block in, and so that'll search for a thing. So that's a much faster. You don't have to get out your mouse. You can stay on the keyboard um, and type quicker. And then you know I type in video, and it's going to give me that YouTube embed or the video, or um, you know some different video provider options. Um, and so that's another handy way to insert text. Um, where the block um, sidebar, the block settings is in the sidebar. Um, the one tab is the blocks. There's also another tab um, for the document, um, and that's where you would go to um, you know to go back revisions or to adjust the um, the URL, the permalink to change the excerpt, to turn on um, call, um, comments. Um, and so that's a thing, a lot of stuff you might be used to seeing in the sidebar, like tags and page template. Um, those are going to show up in this document tab of the, um, the sidebar editor. Um, you'll see there's some blocks at the top that would let me, this is a bit for review now because this is um, not a published page. But if it was, um, if I was allowed to publish it, that block would say publish. Um, and that's all stuff that would be available to you. Um, it's Gutenberg by default. It's going to let you publish. It's just the way that this particular um, demo is set up. So um, that is a quick demo of Gutenberg. Um, so here we have a couple questions here. Um, so um, one question is, can you change the type of block after the content has been added? Yes, you can. So certain blocks have um, block transforms. Um, and this will depend on block. You can't transform any block into another block. Um, you'll see if I hover over the paragraph icon um, at the top of this block, it's going to get this little shift block thing, and that lets you change the block type. Um, so with paragraph, it's given me a couple different options for what I can transform that into. So like I can't transform paragraph into image, but I can transform that into a heading, and it's going to convert um, that paragraph block into a heading, and it's going to do its best to to keep um, the formatting it can, you know, obviously, depending on which block you transform into, it may not have, you know, the same things. Um, so it, it's going to translate the settings, so it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one. -one. Um, like if I've done the background color, um, like if I go back to paragraph and um, I can do, let's say, text color and background color, pick some ugly colors there, I transform that into heading, that background color obviously goes away because that heading block doesn't support that, um, but you can transform. But it is determined by the block itself, what it's allowed to trans transform into. Um, so it's not going to do everything. But like I can go from heading to quote, um, and then heading, you know, quote to list. And so there's, there's I can go back and forth between them. Um, and then, so that's, that's sort of the answer to that question. Um, and then can you tr combine or separate content into other blocks? Um, it sort of depends on what you mean. Um, so if you want to, say, um, combine blocks together, like you can't sort of merge these two paragraph blocks without sort of just copying and pasting into here. Um, you know, and if I hit Enter again, it's going to split these up into two blocks. Um, you can hit Shift Enter, which will let you, um, which won't create a new block. Um, it'll keep it just a blank line in there. Um, and so that's one way that you can sort of have two paragraphs into blocks. Um, and then can you separate the content? It sort of depends on what content the block is. Like, I don't think if I, say, did a list um, that there'd be an easy way for me to, oh, well, there you go, I just did a, um, so I guess you can't split it up. I did Shift-Enter there, and it split those into two different blocks. Um, 
but um, it's not so easy to split. I mean, if you have a paragraph, you can just hit enter, and that'll split it apart. I'm combining them, um, I don't know. Let's say if I make another list block here, if it's going to let me combine them. So do list. Um, yeah, I do not think you can combine those. Um, now, the one thing I will say is one of the blocks that I haven't really talked about yet is um, the classic block, um, because that is a block that's basically the classic editor inside the block. And so if you do not like the fact that it's making new blocks every time you do a new paragraph, or you want to have sort of image and text together, you can have this paragraph block and um, or this classic block, and you can enter all you want. And this is all just going to be one block. And so that's an easy way to keep everything together. If you know that you um, don't want things apart, or you want to add an image in there, um, so I can add an image into this um, paragraph block. And um, yeah, I'm getting some some weirdness here. But you'd be able to insert an editor into this block, right? An image into this block, or short codes into this block. Um, and so that, that's a good way to sort of keep stuff together if you don't want to have to worry about things being separate blocks. Um, so um, changing the block type, yes. Um, combining or separating, it really depends on the block. Paragraphs, easy to separate. Lists, you can separate. Um, combining them back together again. Um, paragraphs, you know, you can just sort of um, back up into each other um, and that will um, turn it into a different block. Yeah, or the same block, but um, separating them, you know, it depends on the block. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. You can um, add more text in the Q&A document if you want more clarification. Um, OK, so um, I am going to move on with the presentation. Um, if we have time at the end, we can go back here if you want to see any, any more demos of what's going on. Um, but I am going to go back over to my demo or my presentation. Um, okay. Um, so uh, what happens when you upgrade um, is a big question on everyone's mind, especially given that it is coming so soon. Um, so uh, the first thing to keep in mind is that most of WordPress isn't changing. Um, adding media, managing the comments, choosing themes and plugins, managing users, the tools and the settings, that's all changing the same. That's not going to change. Um, so you don't have to worry about you know, everything about um, WordPress changing. It's just the editing experience, which is a big part of WordPress, but it's not, it's not everything. Um, so. Um, yeah, if you have any plugins that are incompatible with Gutenberg or WordPress, um, your users may be likely to experience pain, misery, and bad fortune, which is a little hyperbolic. But um, you know, there's a chance if you have an older plugin, especially one that relates to the editing experience, that it may cease to work. Um, and so there is a Gutenberg plugin compatibility database that the core team has started working on. Um, and so if you're using a plugin that interacts with the editing experience, if it's adding extra buttons to your editor, or it's doing other fancy things in there, um, you may want to go into that database and check it out, see what they say about your plugin, if it's been updated, or if it, you may want to look for alternatives. Um, so here's what is changing, is the posts and the page editing experience. Also, if you have any other custom post types. Um, so things that, that might be weird is if you have themes or plugins that add um, to that content editing experience, if you're using page builders, or other things that are adding you know, icons to your editor um, to be able to insert into your content. Um, so things like that may um, act differently or not work inside of Gutenberg. Um, and so that definitely that themes and plugins that change the content editing experience is a big one, because that's sort of all of those little tricks and hacks that we were using to build those complex pages um, were sort of things that were changing the content editing experience. Um, so, um, the question of how much work is upgrading to Gutenberg going to be depends really on how much your themes and plugins are changing the content editing experience. Um, so we've sort of classified um, the way that you could have your site set up into four different categories. 
Uh, Vanilla WordPress, which is a simple website, not a lot of bells and whistles, which means this is a basic theme. You're not really changing the um, content and experience very much. You have posts and you have pages, you write text and stuff, but you're not doing maybe these crazy layout things. You know, maybe you have a Google Analytics plugin or something else that's not really gonna affect the um, Gutenberg experience. And um, yeah, you might also have a sh sites with shortcake shortcodes, which is a lot of sites that we've built, which means you're using shortcake um, and shortcodes to give a more WYSIWYG experience. And um, those are gonna be in there. Uh, you may also have um, sites with advanced custom fields. Um, this is several of our sites use advanced custom fields. I know University of Communications has built sites that use advanced custom fields. Um, some, if you've gotten a site from a vendor that's you know maybe using advanced custom fields, it's pretty common. Um, and then that's sort of its own class. And then that fourth category is sites with page building plugins, um, which means if you're using Visual Composer, Divi, Beaver Builder, uh, etc., that's its own um, set of um, problems that you may run into. So uh, vanilla WordPress, um, what happens when you go from um, classic to Gutenberg? Um, and so you'll see here's you know, a screenshot of the classic editor. It's basically pretty simple. We've got some paragraphs. We've got um, some block quotes. Um, but there's nothing much going on. You know, there's a link in there. Um, so when you transform that into Gutenberg, or, or once you um, enable Gutenberg, um, and you open that page, everything is going to be put into a single classic block, the classic block I showed you earlier. Um, so it's all the stuff that was in your classic editor, but now it means um, it's inside of Gutenberg. Um, now, the thing to know is that you can't add other blocks inside of a classic block. You're limited to basically just that text and image stuff or stuff that you could do in the classic editor. Um, but you'll see that it handled up pretty well. Those block quotes came over. Um, that link came over. Um, that's pretty fine, and so there's no real, no real problem here. Now it's in a classic editor block, um, and you could just you know save this page. You could edit the content, and that's fine. Um, now, if you wanted to make that more Gutenbergy, each classic block has an extra option in that options menu that is convert to blocks. And what that's going to do is Gutenberg is going to look through the content that's in that classic block, and it's going to make its best guess to transform that into blocks themselves. So in this situation, um, we had paragraphs and we had block quotes. Um, it transformed that. It's gonna do um, pretty well. Like it, those match up to blocks that it already has. Um, and so it's just gonna break those apart into blocks. And so now it's inside of Gutenberg. Um, it hasn't really changed at all. And now you can add other blocks inside of there. Um, if it didn't recognize anything, it would probably try and put it into a custom HTML block, which is where instead of it being sort of a block that's WYSIWYG, instead it's just a block that's going to show you what that HTML code is, which may be okay. You know, if it's an iframe or something that you, you know, you know how to use the HTML that's in there, um, that's fine, that's whatever. Um, but if it's something that was kind of specific, uh, you may or may not be happy with that. You may look at wanting to replace that with um, a custom block, or you can always just leave it in the classic um, block. Um, there's no necessarily a reason to take it out of the classic block um, if it's if it's working fine for you. It's only if you want those extra Gutenberg features. Um, so um, yeah, so vanilla WordPress should be a smooth upgrade. Um, some pages need uh, may need a cleanup depending on what's going on with them. Uh, if you need help, you can email us at oitdesign at ncsu.edu. Um, but you should pretty much just be able to turn on Gutenberg and not worry too much about it. Um, some plugins may break if they interact with the editing experience, especially old ones. Um, but it's a good idea not to use super old plugins anyways. Um, so for y'all using vanilla WordPress, um, that's going to be pretty OK. Now, sites with shortcake shortcodes, um, a lot of stuff that we've been building, um, as well as if you've been using the NC State shortcodes plugin, um, that's probably you. Um, and so here's an example of the classic editor with some shortcake shortcodes. Um, so you'll see this is a shortcode under the hood, um, but it is rendering as um, you know, sort of the WYSIWYG preview. Um, and we've also got a button in there um, and some text. Um, and so that looks good in here. Um, and let's see what happens when we put that into Gutenberg. It's going to put that into a classic block. Now, those short code previews render sort of. I mean, we're sort of still getting the general idea of what we had before we've got that image. We still see that icon and that background. Um, the button has sort of uh, not turned into a button anymore. It's now just a link. Um, but um, for the most part, it's fine. And you could add extra CSS to clean this up um, a little bit later. Um, but for the most part, it's still going to work. 
Now, once you transform this into, once you run the convert to blocks, you'll see that Gutenberg does good with those paragraphs to turn those paragraphs into blocks, um, but it's going to turn those short codes into a short code block, um, which is fine. It's still going to work on the front end, um, but you're going to lose that shortcake preview. And so you'll see that where that was, we did have that sort of OK preview in the classic editor is now just a, um, a short code block. So if you know, you know how to work with um, the short code attributes to get this look that you want, and you can you know work with this, that's fine. Um, but it's a little bit more clunky. And now, especially for like the button um, short code, there's now a Gutenberg button block. And so you know this might be a case where you want to just replace that short code block with that button block because that's going to be easier to work with for you. Um, so the editor previews won't render yet. Um, now they are working, the people who developed the shortcake preview, they're working on um, allowing those short codes to um, render in Gutenberg. Um, so that might be an easy solution if you're using that. Um, but for now, um, there's no render. Um, but we recommend upgrading to the NC State short, updating the short codes plugin if you're using it, which has some CSS fixes um, that will help it work a little bit better with Gutenberg. And um, also, if you're using any custom short codes, um, those may need to be fixed to make sure that they're working inside the editor, adding a little bit of extra CSS on there. Now, uh, sites with advanced custom fields. Um, so some on and off-campus developers have used ACF to create modular page templates. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is the, what a lot of these do is they get rid of the classic editor entirely. And they add sort of these repeatable field groups. And then whatever template they're using on the front end pulls in the information from those repeat, repeatable field groups. Now, um, when you update to um, Gutenberg, you're still going to be able to see those advanced, you know, those repeatable groups um, down below. And you can still do that and edit that the same way. Um, but there's also a big empty space up above where the, Guten the regular Gutenberg editor is going to be. And so if you see this, you may forget that you're using the advanced custom fields down below, and you're going to want to try and use those blocks. And those are just going to add everything up to that, the main Gutenberg content section up above. But that's not going to pop into that template because the template is not using that regular editor because it disabled that in favor of advanced custom fields. So you may have users trying to, um, sorry, trying to add um, blocks in there, and they're going to update it, and it's not going to change anything, and they're going to get frustrated. Um, but for the most part, it's still going to work. You're just going to have to know to avoid those sections. Um, so the front end is not going to break, but the editor is going to be um, more confusing. Um, so definitely talk to your developer. Um, some theme rewrites may be needed, um, some minor tweaking at least, to make sure that that works well with Gutenberg. Now, for page building plugins, Hold on to your butts. Uh, this is really a big question of it really depends on the plugin that you're using, what that developer is doing. Um, so if you're using a page building thing, whether that's in your theme or your plugin, like Divi, Visual Composer, Beaver Builder, or other ones, you need to find out what their plan is for Gutenberg um, upgrade. And um, if they have a plan for Gutenberg compatibility, make sure you have an up-to-date license and update to the latest version of their plugin. And if they don't have a plan, uh, look for other options because if their option is only just, oh, you know, never install Gutenberg, it'll be fine, um, then you want to look for other places for um, a site building plugin. Um, now, those big companies like Divi is a big company and Beaver Builder is a big company, they all um, have an entire business built around the fact that these things are going to work with WordPress. So probably they're going to have a, a plan and they're going to make sure that those stuff. Their, their stuff easily translates to Gutenberg. Um, but definitely double check and make sure that you're not going to be left high and dry um, when you upgrade to Gutenberg. So some homework for y'all is to determine if your site uses shortcake powered short codes, advanced custom fields, or a page building plugin, and then contact the support team you need to contact. Maybe that's OIT Design, maybe that's um, you know Cal's IT, whatever your local IT is, or if you're supported by another vendor. Um, talk to them and make sure that you know what's going to happen um, when you upgrade. Uh, if you're not sure where to go, uh, you can drop into our office hours. Um, more information about that at that link there. Um, but that's Fridays from 9 to noon, um, typically in Avent Ferry, room 106, Avent Ferry Technical Complex right across from Mission Valley in the basement, room 106. And uh, we can sit down with you and kind of work through 
um, what your site would be might be using and what um, you'll need to do to make sure you're in right good place for Gutenberg. So in case you're freaking out a little, which is reasonable given that it's theoretically coming out on Thursday, two days from now. Um, so when should you upgrade? Option one, um, with WordPress 5.0. Option two, get Gutenberg early, which is not so much an option anymore. And option three is delay upgrading to Gutenberg. Um, so option one, upgrade with WordPress 5.0. Um, that's the easy choice. Um, you don't have to do anything special um, until the update pops up on your screen. Um, and you can hit that update button. Uh, most bugs bugs are probably going to be fixed. We hope. Um, uh, I have a separate section where I'll talk about this at the end. Um, but their bugs will be mostly fine. Um, but that is going to upgrade it for everyone all at once. It's going to be one big change. And so if you manage multiple sites, just keep in mind how many people that's going to affect um, when you do upgrade. Um, now, if you wanted to get Gutenberg early, like before Thursday, you still could. It's a plugin on the WordPress plugin um, repository, and so you can install that and start using that now, um, or you know, playing with it, see what's going to happen. Um, if you want to, you know, do a trial run, if you have like a dev version of your site, you can install that today and then see what happens when you convert stuff to Gutenberg. See if there's any issues. Um, and that'll leave the classic editor still available, but um, it'll let you make new posts in Gutenberg um, by, um, if you want to. Um, now, option three is to, um, yeah, so the advantage of getting Gutenberg early is to control your destiny, and you may see some bugs. Um, that's not really the case anymore, given that we're so close to um, launch anyways. Um, so I'm going to skip over that. So. Um, Option three is delay upgrading to Gutenberg. Um, and I will say that at this point, um, there are still some bugs inside of Gutenberg that our team is concerned about. Um, there are still some accessibility concerns. So unless you are gonna be the one using your site and you are confident that you can work around Gutenberg and use the bugs, uh, use use the plugin and, and sort of you know work around the bugs and you're not too concerned about it, um, you can go for it and upgrade to WordPress 5.0 when it comes out and use Gutenberg, but our strong recommendation is that when Gutenberg launches 5.0, you install, or before you upgrade, you install the classic editor plugin, and then you upgrade to WordPress 5.0, which is gonna make it so that you're on WordPress 5.0, you've gotten that updates, but you don't have Gutenberg yet, so you don't um, have to use Gutenberg, but you're still on the latest version of WordPress. Um, Gutenberg still has some accessibility issues, so, um, Unless it's 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 just you use the site, and we, you know we have a responsibility as a, a university to make sure all the stuff we use is um, WCAG 2.0 compliant um, for accessibility. And it's not entirely clear that WordPress Gutenberg meets those standards. Um, so definitely, definitely go around your sites, um, install this classic editor plugin. Um, then you don't have to worry about you know accidentally upgrading to WordPress 5.0. You don't have to worry about staying on an older version and having security issues. Um, you can upgrade and have WordPress 5.0, and um, it will be very handy. Um, so I would definitely recommend you do that um, sooner than later, um, and that'll let you configure options for certain users. Um, and so right now, this is what we're recommending. Um, and then maybe you know once some things um, get worked out, we can do that. Um, you can upgrade, you know, take that classic editor off, or sort of uh, you know on a post by post basis when you're ready for it. Um, yeah, I'll let you do that. So there's a question in the questions: um, Can the classic editor allow activation on selected sites? Uh, yes, it can. So if you install the classic editor plugin, you can do that on a pretty uh, granular basis in terms of, um, you know, if you have. Um, a network, you can install it on the network, um, but only activate it on a site-by-site -site basis so that you have one site that's maybe a test site that you leave, you know, with Gutenberg, but then on all your live sites, you know, enable the classic editor plug in there until you want that, um, until you're ready to migrate those. It can also be a post-by-post -post or a user-by-user -user basis. If you're fine with Gutenberg, you like using it, um, you know, go ahead um, and you can turn Gutenberg on for yourself, um, but leave it on. Um, leave classic editor on until you've you know trained users um, and you know that they're ready to use Gutenberg. Um, the one thing I will say is that there can be some kind of quirks if you're trying to go back and forth between the classic editor and Gutenberg. Um, that can be kind of weird, so I wouldn't recommend that. So um, if you're doing it for a user-by-user -user basis, make sure that 
um, really they should be editing separate pages so that you're not trying to you know, edit with Gutenberg and then edit that Gutenberg created post with um, um, the classic editor. You know, it's fine to go from the classic editor to Gutenberg, um, but it's, it's sort of hard to go back from Gutenberg to the classic editor. So I wouldn't um, sort of go back and forth like that. Um, so definitely, um, I'll reiterate again, I highly recommend installing Classic Editor on all your sites and then only turning it off once you're ready and you you um, you know what's going on and once they've sort of fixed some of the bugs that are still um, that are still there in the versions of WordPress. Maybe they get them all fixed by Thursday. Um, I bet there's still going to be bugs. And you may want to wait you know, until they release 5.01 or 5.02 um, when they resolve some of those issues. Um, so the, you know there is the advantage is that nothing changes. Um, the disadvantage is that you have a risk of falling behind. So Gutenberg is the future of WordPress. Um, you're going to see more and more stuff built. You know, assuming that you're using Gutenberg. So if you're saying you know you're not using Gutenberg, um, then um, you may be sort of falling behind a little bit. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen very fast. You know, I would say that you could use the classic editor for for up to a year before you really start falling behind. And I think they've said they would support it until 2022. So um, that gives you really several years to get your stuff in order. Um, I think that we are, we're probably gonna be using the classic editor for at least a month or two on most of our sites until we're ready to migrate over. Um, so um, yeah, use the classic editor um, plugin. Um, that's our recommendation for sure um, at this point. Um, so who should delay upgrading? People with a plan for future. Um, so if you if you have a plan um, and you know you're going to do it, um, definitely install the classic editor because um, it's it's definitely going to buy you time, especially given that there's still some latent issues. I would do it, um, but make sure that you still have a plan. Don't just use the classic editor plugin as a way to ignore the fact that Gutenberg's coming out, um, because you're going to want to upgrade eventually. Um, but use it to sort of you know not have to deal with working on a bunch of stuff right before the holidays um, or what have you. Um, but make sure that you know that you will have to do that in the future eventually. Um, so also there's this plugin called the Gutenberg ramp, um, which is sort of option 2.5. Um, and so uh, this is good because it gives you a little more, some of these features have been built into the classic editor plugin, um, but this gives you even more granularity on like what, um, what content is going to be edited with Gutenberg. Like if you have, you know, pages that are like super simple um, and, or, or maybe, you know, all your posts are just basic um, content. Um, you, know, you know, text and images, but you have complex pages, you know, maybe you can turn Gutenberg on just for your posts um, and leave it on off for your um, um, pages. Um, and so that's a good option to sort of have more finite control about what's happening with Gutenberg where. Um, so the key takeaway is um, you should make a plan and talk with your web support team and also talk with your users, make sure that they know this is coming and take a look at um, sort of you know what the content you have is how much of that stuff you have is more vanilla how much of it has more stuff going on and sort of get a sense for um what it's going to look like for you when you are upgrading um so let's take a look at sort of the cooler things that gutenberg will be able to do um, and sort of the exciting things that we have coming up so when we look at gutenberg plus wolfie we end up with Wolfenberg, which is uh, just the mascot for a plugin that we've been working on called NC State Blocks. Um, we have been working with, um, it will be available through Cthulhu. We've been working with UCOM, um, the IT Accessibility Coordinator, and other web teams on campus. And basically, this is going to be similar if you used um, NC State Short Codes, where it is a set of custom blocks that are sort of custom um, customized for NC State's campus. So um, you know, if you're used to the major link or those other, you know, elements, um, this will have that. Um, so we're a little bit behind on our timeline and we've sort of been working to make sure compatibility and it's not out yet. It probably will not be out by the time Gutenberg launches on Thursday, two days from now. Um, but some of the blocks that we have are um, an alert block, which is sort of just a color block that you can choose, you know, whether it's, you know, a success or inf information or, it's a warning and it'll have an icon I'll let you put some text. Uh, we've got a call out which lets you have an image and then an icon or text, um, you know, enhanced text, which has, you know, text and icon, you know, expanding panel, a major link, um, a recent posts, video banner. And so that's, some, it's, it'll be a nice toolbox for people to be able to build 
um, branded pages with Gutenberg um, for any site on campus. And so look for that um, in the near future. Um, I would say that it will probably not be out before the end of the year, but I would imagine um, pretty early in the new year um, we'll be ready for that. Um, and then some other stuff that like we might be looking at in the future would be, you know, relationships between blocks. So like if you're making a block, it may, you know, suggest a block that, um, you know, would come well after that. It might guess what block might be nice. Um, you know, we might make some common block layouts and templates. You know, maybe there's a block that interact with ServiceNow, maybe a protected content block, maybe a block that'll let you um, pull from pack picks. You know, we're looking at in the future making an expansion to our, our NC State blocks that's, you know, charts and visualization, you know, BART charts, maybe a block that will do Brian's laundry, um, who knows. And so there's all sorts of different blocks that, uh, you know, we have on the horizon. There's a lot of people working hard on development for Gutenberg. Um, so, you know, I think there's been, I've been maybe a little bit um, causing you some worry in the, early in this presentation, but there's a lot of cool stuff that Gutenberg's going to let us do. Um, so um, definitely be excited about the future, even if there may be sort of a rocky transition, but there's some cool stuff going on. Um, you should also talk to your theme developer, whoever that is, about theme um, styles. Um, so Gutenberg um, is going to add its own CSS for the front end styles of core blocks to make sure things work. Um, for things like uh, columns or other things, there's some basic CSS that it needs to make that work. Um, but your existing themes may need to have the CSS tweaked so that blocks play nice with your CSS. Uh, if you have a custom theme, um, you want to make sure that it's going to work well with the content produced through Gutenberg. Um, and so you should style the Gutenberg editor match your theme styles. You know, Gutenberg by default, you saw it earlier, has sort of the serif font. It's going to make some decisions in terms of the colors for the links and stuff that it's going to show. Um, but you may want to change that. So we've actually produced some basic NC State Guten styles, which changes the um, the typeface in the editor to the um, the brand typeface or font, um, and um, add some other stuff. Changes the color of the links to match the the style. So here's an example of sort of what that looks like. You know, the default Gutenberg button is sort of this rounded black button. Um, we're not allowed to have rounded buttons, so we have here a square button, and it changes you know the look of those um, lists and the headings to match. Um, what sort of the default NC State styling should be. And so that's super handy to add into your theme to make sure that the content that you make is going to look like that branded stuff um, when you're in the editor to get closer to that what you see is what you get experience. Now, you should also talk to your theme developer about wide align support. Um, so Gutenberg supports align wide and align full options. Um, and it can apply to any block that uses the align utility not just images. And basically, this is just a new feature that lets you um, have these blocks that can break out of the container. So you'll see sort of on the left and right hand side, um, you know, they're sort of an edge of the content. But you might want to highlight something by letting that break out of the container. Um, and so you can do that with an align wide or align full. But that has to be something that this theme declares. And you have to build in the CSS for that. Um, so it's a cool new feature. But it's going to be a thing that requires some theme editing to enable that feature. Um, also, talk to your theme developer about custom color palette. Um, you'll notice that it does come, Gutenberg comes with some, some default palettes in there. Um, but you'll probably want to change that to something different, perhaps, say, the NC State brand colors. You'll notice some blues in there that you probably don't want to let people make on your site, um, lest they think that we're from Chapel Hill. Um, so we can change those to something we like, such as that, where you get the nice brand colors in there. Um, so that you, you, the only options you can see are the branded NC State colors, which is pretty handy because otherwise you'll have to go into the, the custom color thing and, and pick out the color or you have to know the hex code. And so that's a pretty handy thing for when you're editing pages to be able to just um, add that. And when you add that to your theme, it will come to any block that has color options. So your paragraph has some color options and any other blocks that, that pull colors. And um, also talk to your theme developer about removing blocks that you don't want users to see. For instance, like there's the a verse block for poetry. Um, that's probably just going to confuse people. Like there's the video block. If you know you're not going to be uploading videos just to your WordPress site and you're, you're going to be using YouTube or stuff, you can disable that block at the theme level. Um, there's other blocks. Like if you're not going to use, I don't know, like Spotify embeds, you can um, 
disable those blocks so that users don't see stuff um, that's going to confuse them and you just have fewer things to sort through if you're looking through all your blocks. You can also build block templates. And what that means is that you can populate certain custom post types or pages with blocks you want your users to see. So if you have like a, like a page or a custom post type for a thing and you want that to be, you know, it's always in the same format and needs some basic information in there, you can set it up so that every time you um, edit a page, it's gonna populate some default information in there. Um, and so that's super handy if you have, you know, like we've done, had some clients before that have like proposals that need like certain headings and information in there and it'll automatically pop that in there so you don't have to rewrite that every time. And so that's definitely a killer feature, feature um, for sort of saving some time um, from using, um, having to write the same stuff over and over again. So all of which to say is Gutenberg is a really big deal. Um, there's a lot of really amazing stuff in the WordPress of tomorrow. Um, but it's going to take some good planning and good communication between you, your users, and your theme and plugin developers to get you there. Um, it's very exciting, but um, especially at this point, there's some bugs that still need to be worked out. There may be some issues on transition, and it's going to be a learning experience um, for people who are not used to Gutenberg, um, which is pretty much most of us. Um, so questions? Um, I will be in here monitoring the... Um, the document for any questions. Also, if you want to view these slides, um, click on any of the links within them, um, go.nccu.edu slash Gutenberg dash admin um, will get you the link to these slides and you can uh, look back through them, um, get the links or review them at your leisure, share them with your units or what have you. So I will be in here for a little bit um, taking any more questions you have, but if you are looking to go somewhere. Uh, thank you for coming. Hopefully you learned something and good luck. No questions? I love questions. All right, if there are no questions, I am going to head and shut the stream down. Um, thanks again for attending. Uh, if you want to click through the evaluation, uh, let us know how we did. Um, that's always handy um, to help us improve um, class for um, the future people who take this. Um, thanks again for attending. Um, and again, we do office hours. Uh, my team every Friday from 9 to noon in Avent Ferry, room 106. Um, so if you have questions, you're concerned about Gutenberg, um, theoretically, that will have come out the day before. Um, so if you want to come in and talk to us, um, that's a good time to do so. Also, if you have any questions um, about Gutenberg, you can submit a ticket about WordPress um, to help at, OS, help at ncsu.edu and mention WordPress, and it will likely be routed to our team, and we can help you with that. So thanks again, and have a good day.